Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Let's go build something cool. Okay, so in order to get the proper speed signal from our four-wheel drive conversion, we have this gear that has to be installed. It's like an interference fit. She's a hundred and some odd degrees, maybe 200. We're coming over here. We're gonna drive this puppy on. Yay, I didn't hurt myself yet. Oh yeah, she won. Right, we're making progress, about halfway through it. And there's no way to pull this on and I've talked to the people who do this all the time and this is how you do it. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, I think that's good. Alright, so there's a taper right here at the um, part where the gear sits. This taper right here. I'm going basically just to where that taper is going to end. Um, on the back side, see if you guys can, there we go. You can tell we're already almost proud of the, the back side. So, <sighs> all right, so that little journal right there, that's where that rides. All right, as these teeth pass a magnet, it creates a voltage, and that voltage signal goes into the pigtail, goes up to the ECU, and the ECU translates that to uh output shaft speed so that way you've got um speed sensor on this side of the transmission so what we're gonna do is we've got the tail shaft extension that goes on uh e450 had a parking brake that's right here see the cable so anyway so the parking brakes on the drive line uh but they're pretty problematic and so what we're doing is we're getting the um uh, it already has a four-wheel drive transmission in it with the four-wheel drive output shaft so we didn't have to pull the transmission off and send it out and get it redone um because you do have to replace this from the front so it's kind of like doing back surgery through your belly button anyways so this is getting this is going to give us our speed sensor and um so our transfer case adapter will go on here in just a second and then um, we'll be able to hang the transfer case and then we'll get our drive line remade and our rear end is on order. Uh, customer decided on this one, we are gonna go from the Dana 70 Super, which is kind of an oddball diff. It's not something you can easily get parts for. Uh, we are going to go with uh, a Dana 80. So I've got one being shipped in from a salvage yard uh, in the Midwest with relatively low miles. Came out of a big, uh, like an airport shuttle, kind of big fiberglass body church bus thing. Anyway, so Dana 80, uh, and most of that is so that we can run the diff that he wants. He wants to run a true track, and they don't make a true track for a 70. They make it for 60s and 80s. Well, we got a true track in the front, and that'll give us a true track in the back. So we really don't need an ARB locker, we really don't need an E locker, and they don't want to deal with the noise from a, a Detroit locker. And we also don't want the weight jacking with us on a clutch type diff. So we think we feel, the customer and I, feel as though uh, the True Track is the best option for what we're actually going to do with this, uh, for what they're actually going to do with this rig. Hey, welcome back for the next update. We got a transfer case. How cool is that? Also a new uh, transmission mount. Um, this output is directly in line with this carrier bearing support and that carrier bearing support is gonna be in the wrong place anyway. 
So, it may wind up needing another cross member back here. Or we may do a full one piece. I'm really not sure. But anyway, so I wanted to show you guys a little thing about popping rivets out in frames. First thing I did was I took the die grinder and I cut a slit in the middle of it. And you might be able to see, sorry for the zebra effect, uh, you might be able to see this circle. And that circle is the rivet. Well, we still got on this side, we still got a little, a uh, little bit of head still on there. Um, I cut the slot in it and then I cut the uh, air hammer with the chisel on it. So we took the chisel and knocked the, the, the head of it off uh, and then tried to use the center punch and try to drive it through, but it's still kind of hanging in there. Uh, we're not gonna reuse this, I would imagine. I'll keep it just in case, but I'm gonna buff this down a little bit so we kind of get rid of some of that. This one, I cut under it with the cutoff wheel and uh, still got a little bit of shenanigans hanging in there. So we're gonna hit it with the grinder with a flap wheel on it. All right, I wanted to talk to you about this grinder wheel. This one's pretty cool. It's a 40 grit. And as you can see, it wraps all the way around. That's pretty cool. I uh, found these a couple of months ago and these are from Diablo. Um, this is for grinding inside of corners, like on beams and stuff. So it's getting pretty handy. I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of digging it. They're not cheap, but I like it. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> 